conqueror, ruler, brave, and courageous leader, Muslim world has ever seen none other than the great Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. You know, he was the ruler of the states of Egypt and Syria, and he is known for his bravery battles that he fought against the Crusaders and defeated them with his courage and valor and conquered the state of Jerusalem. Dear viewers, history is full of his great, great achievements, which is recognized not only by the Muslim world, but his enemies also. But its facts, its information and its accomplishments cannot be shared just in one video. That's why I have decided to make it in two parts. In first part, I will tell you about his legacy, his early life, mannerism, defeat of crusaders and of course capture of Jerusalem. So let's know the different phases of the life of great Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. Salahuddin is an Arabic name that means the righteousness of the faith. Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi was born on 4th March 1193 in Tikrit between Mosul and Baghdad. His family was of Kurdish background and ancestry. He was dearly loved by his father Najmuddin Ayyub, for whom the Ayyubi dynasty is named and mother name was Sid Khatun. He married with Ismaddin Khatun and had five sons. Whole family was banished from Tikrit and in 1139, his father Najmuddin Ayyub and his brother Asaduddin Shirku moved to Mosul. He later joined the service of Imaduddin Zangi, who was the father of Nuruddin Zangi, and he made him commander of his fortress in Baalbek. Salahuddin Ayyubi, who now lived in Damascus, was reported to have a particular fondness of the city. From a young age, he is educated in Greek philosophy, mathematics, poetry, astronomy, law, and above all, he became an ardent student of Holy Quran and theology. Legacy and Mannerism of Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi al nasi Salahuddin Yusuf ibn Ayyub, known as Salahuddin in the Western world, this great Muslim Sultan is widely revered as the ideal of a warrior who is fierce in battle and generous to his enemies. Salahuddin used to perform the five obligatory prayers on time. He never prayed except in congregation and he never delayed a prayer. He used to always have an Imam with him. But if the Imam was not present, he would pray behind any pious scholar who might be sitting with him. He never quit a prayer except when he slipped into a coma for three days before his death. He would spend most of his money on sadaqa and he never possessed enough wealth that he would have required him to pay zakat. Although he always wanted to perform much, but for a long time he was occupied in jihad plus had not enough money to perform much and died without performing it. He never spoke badly about anyone and never allowed anyone to do so in his presence. He never uttered a rude word and never used his pen to humiliate a Muslim. Dear viewers, in regard of the mannerism, one of the historians named Ibn Shadr he relates when English king Richard the Lionheart fell ill and he was the arch enemy of the Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. Salahuddin Ayyubi came to know about his death through some sources and you know what he did. He sent him some fruits, sweets, eating stuff and asked about his health. By doing this, what happened? The crusaders who were hungry and poverty stricken were astonished at the noble chivalry and mercy from their enemy. Defeat of Crusaders and Jerusalem After nearly a decade of fighting smaller battles against the Franks, Slavdin prepared to launch a full-scale attack in 1187 by assembling troops from across his realm south of Damascus and an impressive Egyptian fleet at Alexandria. His army met the Franks in a massive clash at Hatim, near Tebrias, which is modern-day Israel, and defeated them soundly on July 4, 1187. 
victory in the Battle of Athens was followed by a string of quick victories across the kingdom of Jerusalem, culminating on October 2, 1187, when the city of Jerusalem surrendered to Slaudin's army after 88 years under Christian control. Though Slaudin had planned to finish all crusaders in Jerusalem as a revenge for the slaughter of Muslims in 1099, but he agreed to let them avail their freedom instead. By that time, Slaudin's forces had taken control of a number of other important cities from the Crusaders, including Tiberias and Jaffa. Yet he did not manage to capture Tyre, the coastal fortress to which most of the surviving Crusaders retreated after their defeats. The Third Crusade in the wake of Slavdin's capture of Jerusalem, Pope Gregory III called for a new crusade to recapture the city. In 1189, Christian force mobilized at Tyre to launch the Third Crusade, led by three powerful kings, Frederick I Barbarossa, the German king and Roman emperor, King Philip II of France and Richard I, the Lionheart of England. The crusaders laid siege to Acre, finally capturing it in 1191 along with the large part of Slavdin's navy. Yet, despite the military prowess of the crusader forces, Slavdin withstood their onslaught and managed to retain control over most of his empire. His truce with Richard the Lionheart in late 1192 ended the Third Crusade. Dear viewers, this was the first video of the life of Sultan Salahuddin in which I have shared with you some important information about the life of this great conqueror. Very soon you will see its second part with some significant information about the life of Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi. Meanwhile stay tuned with my channel The Learning Room and please do not forget to subscribe my channel, comment, like and share. Thank you for watching and take care.